I think the earth today still has cracks where it broke open at the time of the flood. There's no question, there are cracks in the earth's crust, and when they move around, buildings fall down. It's called earthquakes, okay, or tsunamis happen from the, from the underwater landslides and turbidity currents. There's no question the earth is broken up, and there's no question the plates are still moving. The question is, when did all this happen? All this catastrophe probably started at the time of that flood when the fountains of the deep broke open. That's what caused the fault lines. And the water went shooting to the surface, and it's still here today. There's enough water in the oceans. If you smoothed out the earth, it would cover the earth a mile and a half deep everywhere. The coal we find in the ground today is a result of that flood, which buried the world before the flood, when they had lots more trees. There's a coal mine in Montana that is 10,000 square miles of coal up to 200 feet thick. Someone told me a few months ago they've now found a seam 300 feet thick. And sometimes in coal, human artifacts are found. This bell was found inside a lump of coal. This iron pot was found inside a lump of coal. The earth was covered with plants when God made it. Did you know they find leaves in Antarctica? 250 miles from the South Pole, they're finding leaves. There are no trees in the South Pole. 70% of the earth today is underwater. Did you know only 3% of this earth is habitable for mankind? A lot of it's under desert, ice caps, tundra, mountain ranges that nobody can live on. 3% is habitable. What we're seeing today is not what Adam and Eve saw. The Bible says he formed it to be inhabited. That's why he did it. Probably the pre-flood world was, I would just be picking a number and say probably 80% land and only 20% water. The oceans weren't there. They, the water was in the crust of the earth or in the canopy overhead. But there, was, there were trees from pole to pole before the flood came. This layer of water above the earth would act as a barrier that would block out UV light and x-rays and other harmful things that come from the sun. See, the sun produces a lot of stuff besides light. It produces x-rays and gamma rays and beta rays, and all them ray boys come down here, and they're pretty hard on your carcass. And your body has to fix the damage. I mean, you fix millions of holes in your skin every single day. Millions of them. And after 50 or 60 years, or 70 or 80 for sure, everybody around you starts to notice you are losing the battle for damage control. Your skin begins to wrinkle up. Reptiles never stop growing. What would happen to a reptile if you put him in the Garden of Eden and let him live to be 900 years old? You'd have a big lizard. A really big lizard. Dinosaurs were big lizards that lived with Adam and Eve before the flood came. You can get these Jackson chameleons right now at the pet store. What's he going to look like at about 15 tons? Probably some kind of triceratops. Dinosaur means terrible lizard, and dinosaurs lived with humans all through history. They just had a different name for them. We'll cover more on dinosaurs on video number three. A well driller found this little doll 320 feet down while he's drilling a well. Probably a pre-flood doll. This uh, battery thing was found in Iraq, supposed to be a 2,000-year-old battery. They knew about electricity a long time ago. The Egyptians knew about electricity and knew how to electroplate things. Workers found human bones in a copper arrowhead in a vein of silver. Advanced stone tools were found in a gold mine in California. They're digging in the middle of this mountain, digging a shaft back into a gravel pit under layers of lava supposed to be 55 million years old, and they find human tools in there. Professor Holmes of the Smithsonian was one of the most vocal critics of the California finds. He said, Perhaps if Professor Whitney had fully appreciated the story of human evolution, as it is understood today, he would have hesitated to announce the conclusions, notwithstanding the imposing array of testimony. Is he saying he shouldn't have announced this finding because it goes against the theory? Is that what he's saying? <laughs> That's exactly what he's saying. And folks, I'm telling you, there are people that are so dedicated to that stupid evolution theory that they will block out from their mind and from print, if they can, anything that goes against it. They defend the theory with religi religious fervor. Today, folks, we are living in a junkyard. Now, I like living on planet Earth, and Knoxville's a beautiful place, but I'm telling you, folks, this is nothing compared to what Adam and Eve saw. This is a junkyard, but God's going to fix it back. Someday the wolf shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and a fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. 
A guy in Canada sent me a video clip of bears in his yard eating grass for two hours straight. Just nothing but grass. The Bible says the child shall die a hundred years old. They're going to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. Now, there's not, a whole lot, not, not enough scripture to be real dogmatic, but it appears that there's going to be a thousand year span coming after the end of this age when if you're saved, you're going to get to live here for a thousand years with everything fixed back, Garden of Eden conditions. Kids, you're going to get to have your own pet dinosaurs. That's going to be cool. Then he's going to make new heavens and a new earth. Isaiah 65, 2 Peter 3, new heavens, new earth, Revelation 21, new heaven, new earth. You can't even imagine what that's going to be like. I sure can't. The Bible says, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. This is the electromagnetic spectrum. <clears throat> I taught physics. I've got to get this in here somewhere. This contains all the different wavelengths, radio waves, microwaves, including a little bitty slice called light, the color spectrum, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Your eyeball is able to see those colors, but that's only a small piece of a huge spectrum. Suppose God gives us new eyes when we get to heaven, and we're able to see the entire spectrum. That means there'll be brand new colors. Not new shades of these colors, I'm talking brand new colors. New colors.